All right. Robert, Matt, Kari, are you with me? I'm Just... here, John. Happy to be here. All right. Okay. Great. Well, we got uh, almost 200 people already in the door. We know there are a few more uh, coming in. So welcome, everybody, to our webcast about teaching English online. Uh, we got a great lineup here. Um, if you look on the right-hand side of your screen, you should see a chat box control panel. You can use that to type in questions throughout the webcast, and we will respond to you and maybe take some questions at the end and your questions will also be recorded so your advisor can get back to you um why don't you test it out type in where you're tuning in from and uh we'll give you a few shout outs while we let the rest of the folks um get in the door here and then we'll get going here in a moment um matt All right. where do we where do we have people tuning in from so far all right, we'll start with Memphis, Tennessee, first on the board. Um, Atlanta, Georgia, we've got Linda from Australia. Linda, we actually have an Australian uh, named Linda who works here. Um, <laughs> hello from Texas, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Baltimore, New York City, New Jersey. Uh, more from Dallas. Hey, Virginia, we just talked. Dallas is in the house. Um, we're all over the place. Wow. All right. So everybody was pretty enthusiastic about it. Kari, you want to read a few of these off? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, we have right up north, we have Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, so that's always nice. Some, some Canada. So that's always good to hear. Um, uh, yeah. Florida, Chicago. warmer place than here in Chicago. I'll take that. I see Vietnam. Wow. Yeah. There you Sweet. go. My dad lives in Vietnam, but he, he shut out of the country. He's in, been in Singapore the last year because of COVID. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, well, um, it's 5.02. Let's get going. Um, we're really happy we got uh, four of us on the team here with you. Uh, my name is John. I'm a co-founder at ITA. Um, originally from California, but I was lucky enough to grow up overseas in Cairo, Egypt, a truly amazing place. And so I was able to live and travel and then work abroad from an early age and really working in international travel writing and education and TEFL uh, has been my life's work. So. I've uh, been working in the field of TEFL for about a dozen years and uh, really happy to be here with everybody and really happy to introduce uh, my colleague, Robert. Uh, now, Robert is a very special presenter. He taught English online with VIP Kid and they are a big company. They hire thousands of English teachers to teach online and he was actually awarded top instructor. They flew him out to Beijing and the whole nine yards. So he's gonna share all his wisdom. Uh, with you this evening. Uh, Robert, why don't you tell the folks a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks for uh, teeing me up there, John. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so my name is Robert. I am one of the admissions advisors here. Um, as John mentioned, I taught English online for a number of years with VIP Kid. Prior to that, um, I started my career teaching overseas in South Korea. Um, then I ended up moving to Spain, where I taught with my wife. So that was a very cool experience, being able to you know, share travel with somebody I love. Um, and after that international teaching, I moved back home to Chicago and, you know, realized I didn't want to give up teaching. So that's when I got into teaching online. Um, and as John said, in 2017, I was voted one of VIP Kids' top teachers. Uh, they flew me out to Beijing. It was a very surreal experience. And I'm, you know, very excited to share some of my tips and, and be here with you all. Um, so now I want to kick it over to my colleague, Kari. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Um, my name is Kari. I taught English in Ecuador. I worked with uh, primarily business professionals um, uh, and that was a really fun experience. I got to have, a, I mean, a bit different of an English teaching experience than what sometimes people can imagine when they think of uh, teaching English. And uh, yeah, I, I had a really great time. I went back to grad school when I returned to the US, studied international education, and then from there worked in a study abroad office, some international exchange, 
and now I'm back here at TEFL, came full circle. So I'm glad to be with you all tonight. And I'll be one of the people answering questions in the box. So I'm looking forward to it. And now I'll hand it over to my colleague, Matt. Thanks, Kari. Uh, I'm Matt. I've talked with some of you guys here. I've been, been a member of the team for about eight years now. I guess what led me here was I had a professor in college who showed me pictures of castles in Europe and large steins of beer and offered me a scholarship. And I said, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> so I went over to Germany, learned the language, um, really loved the foreign language, uh, classroom and environment thought, how can I spend more time overseas? And actually, some of my friends I studied abroad with tipped me off to the idea of teaching English. So looked into it, got certified, I went to the other side of the world, spent some years over in Seoul, South Korea. Love that spot. And uh, just really had the best time over there. Uh, when I returned here to Chicago, first thing I did was get a job teaching international students who were coming to Chicago for that, their international experience to learn English, and I really enjoyed that, um, and ultimately just led me to working for International TEFL Academy here. Since then, I've spent um, about half a year in Colombia, where I started learning Spanish. I'm still a beginner, uh, but I take Spanish classes online. I haven't taught online, but I learn online. And that is actually a quick tip, a pro tip for anybody who's going to start teaching English online. Try some foreign language classes yourself and get a picture to it. It can be really helpful. All right. That's me. Let's get it rolling. All right. Cool. So got questions. Um, during this presentation, if you have questions pertaining to really anything that we're discussing, uh, just go over to the question box on the right hand side of GoToWebinar, uh, enter your question, hit send, uh, and either Kari or Matt will be answering your questions throughout. Um, now, just a preference, we're expecting about 300 people here. So Kari and Matt are probably going to be, uh, you know, verging on carpal tunnel by the end of the night. Um, so expect them to send you relevant links rather than kind of lengthy typed out answers, um, just to make sure we can kind of work through as many people as possible. Um, and of course, if any questions, you know, further pop up, you always have your admissions advisor that you'll be able to talk to as well. Awesome. So let's take a look at the agenda this evening. Uh, first, we're going to start off with who we are here at ITA. Um, after that, we're going to roll into why you should think about teaching English online. Um, we'll cover if this is a viable option during the coronavirus. Uh, any basic requirements you're going to need in order to, to be able to do this. Uh, types of teaching jobs for teaching online, since you know companies can, can differ quite a bit. Um, some of those differences between teaching online versus teaching in a physical classroom. Um, the top TEFL options that are out there, as well as how our job search guidance works. And finally, we will wrap up with the live Q&A to work through some of those, uh, those frequent questions. Beautiful. So let's meet the team. Uh, so this is a photo from our film festival back in April of 2019, uh, before social distancing. Um, you know, often I get asked what makes ITA different, and I think you're looking at a picture of it. You know, everyone here has been in your shoes at one point or another. We've all lived, worked, and traveled overseas extensively. We share your passion for experiencing the world, and we are here to work with you and help you create your plan to, uh, to make this dream a reality. That's right. And International TEFL Academy, basically, we're a world leader in TEFL certification to train and certify people to teach English abroad and teach English online. Uh, we're really proud that over the years we've won numerous accolades. In fact, just a couple weeks ago, goabroad.com named us top rated TEFL organization and also top online TEFL class. Uh, out of the whole field. So we're really proud of that. We also recommend that you go check out our reviews on some of these third-party websites, get some great perspectives on people's experience with ITA, and also about their experiences teaching English online and teaching English abroad in general. So founded in 2010, International TEFL Academy, we've certified more than 30,000 people. We certify typically between five and 6,000 students a year. Uh, our students range in age from folks in their late teens up to folks in their 70s, even beyond. 
Uh, it's important to note that you don't have to have a background in education to get TEFL certified and teach English abroad or teach English online. You don't need to have a degree. Uh, this is something that you can really do at any stage of life. Now, of course, they're going to be variables. So talk to your advisor about your own personal circumstances and goals, and they'll be happy to assist you. All right, we want to kick off with a quick survey here. What best describes your situation? So Matt's going to pop the survey into the webcast and answer it there, not in the chat pane. Matt, we got that ready to go? There it is. Yeah, there we go. We'll let this go for about a minute. We'll monitor. That's right. So it's always interesting to see this. We got people, you know, looking to get certified for different reasons. Some people want to work teaching English online from home. Some people want to go abroad and do it as a side gig. Uh, people, some people just want to, you know, make extra money while they're traveling, maybe doing something else. So uh, yeah, wow, we're already up to about 70% voted. Let's give it maybe another 10 or 20 seconds, see if we can get up to, you know, 85, 90%. Almost there. Picking up. You say the word and I'll close the poll. I've got my finger on the button. This is an exciting part of the night for me. <laughs> okay, Matt, let's <laughs> do it. We're at about 85%. All right, uh, let's share the results. Can you guys see them? Yes, sir. Wow, so it looks like the majority are thinking of teaching online to gain experience for going abroad. Um, although kind of close behind, uh, some of you are thinking of doing this from the comfort of your home. Others are dreaming of that digital nomad lifestyle, which is awesome, just teaching online and hopping around the world. Um, a few of you are just killing time to see you know, what we're all about. So what's up, everybody? Uh, and a few of you are already TEFL certified and, and looking for work. Cool. All right, Matt, let's hide the poll and move on. Beautiful. So you might be asking, how does teaching English online even work? Um, with millions learning English worldwide, the demand for online education really has exploded in recent years, especially with the onset of COVID-19 sort of forcing the hand. Um, I mean, a flexible lifestyle, the ability to be your own boss while teaching and traveling the world, really what's not to love. Um, so yeah, how exactly does this work? So teaching English online is teaching English as a foreign language to non-native English speakers over the internet through the use of a computer and a webcam. Um, this might be teaching one-on-one -on -one, or it could be a small group. Um, typically it's not going to be, you know, a big class full of students that you're working with. Um, both students and teachers are typically able to set their own times and schedules and teach, you know, from whatever location is convenient. So that's uh, definitely a big perk of being able to, uh, to do this. All right. So what are some of the benefits or what are some of the reasons why you might want to consider teaching English online? Um, several factors at work. Massive job market. Um, there are literally 1.5 billion people learning English online, learning English worldwide. Hundreds of millions of them are learning online, again, especially since the pandemic. Um, English online education is actually one of the fastest growing sectors of international education. Uh, bottom line, there are tons of job opportunities, huge demand for teaching English online, both part-time and full-time. So, we're facing a tough economy. People are looking for ways to make money and work, uh, and teaching English online is one field where opportunities are actually expanding. Cool. So let's talk about this. You know, 51% of you were thinking about this teaching experience before going abroad. Um, if you're taking ITA's 11-week TEFL course or the four-week intensive online course. Uh, you can not only complete your practicum by teaching English online, but you can also gain that experience and earn some solid money before heading overseas. If you've never taught before, 
you can, you know, get more and more comfortable and confident as well before you head overseas. Um, so it's definitely a great resume booster. And I think this is a, a big crux of why teaching online is so popular. Um, as we mentioned, you often set your own hours when you're working with companies and you can work for multiple companies. So if you're asking yourself, you know, do I wanna go teach children? Do I wanna go teach adults? This is a great way to dip your toes in the water. Uh, if you wanna pad your resume before applying to more competitive schools or markets, another great way to do it. Um, so this is definitely something that can, you know, just really help put uh, another arrow in your quiver before you decide to actually head overseas. That's right. And flexibility is another big part of it. As Robert just mentioned, this is something that you can do full time. You can do part time. You can work with different types of students. There are all kinds of different companies that work with different students. Some cater maybe prior, primarily to people, adults working in business, others more working with children. You can work one on one. You can work with uh, group teaching. Um, and again, this is something where you can often set your own hours. You can work as many hours a week as you wish. Uh, you can do it part-time, you can do it full-time. It's, it's a job that you can take with you. So we've literally had ITA graduates sort of country hop or house sit their way across, let's say Europe or Latin America, and they finance themselves and sustain themselves financially just by teaching English um, online so it provides a ton of flexibility and again you can do it from the safety of your own home during a pandemic as well if need be yep absolutely john um so let's kind of dive in can anyone do this can anyone teach online we're going to walk you through some of the requirements to be an online english teacher okay so degree college degree um preferred not required uh certainly there are a lot of big companies out there that require that you do have a uh, college degree and usually a TEFL certification as well to teach English online. That said, there are definitely opportunities for those of you who do not have a degree. Um, and we have a great article on our website. I'm sure Kari and Matt will share it uh, with you. that actually lists a whole number of companies and opportunities for folks to teach without a degree. Um, if you do have a degree, again, it does not have to be in education. Now, certainly, you know, you may have to be a little bit more patient in your job search or in terms of the jobs that you take uh, if you don't have a degree, but it's definitely a viable option. Uh, and that's the big takeaway. Beautiful. So is the couple certification required? Is it preferred? Um, it really depends on the company. But starting back in September, all teaching online companies based in China, and these are a lot of the, the big ones, VIP Kid, Data ABC, Wales English, et cetera. Uh, they all started requiring at least 120 hours of a TEFL certification or a state teaching license. Um, if you wanna be a successful English teacher, whether it's abroad or online, you want more so need to have the professional training and skill set to be able to, to run an English classroom. Um, and you have to bear in mind that schools are competing with each other for students, and therefore they are very eager to hire high quality teachers with strong credentials. And even within companies that you might be working for, uh, it's a bit of a competition there as well. You know, you might be competing with other teachers to draw in students. So getting TEFL certified is key if you want to, you know, first get hired by one of the top companies, and second, you know, a strong base of students coming in the door with stronger views and, you know, that clientele that can really turn this into a, a dream job. Yeah, and I think one question you may want to ask yourself is, hey, I don't have any experience teaching or training teaching English as a foreign language. Uh, if I got stuck in front of a computer right now, us, you know, and you were asked to explain comma usage to a Japanese businessman, would you have a clue how to do it? And the <laughs> chances are probably not. So yeah, that training is definitely key. All right, device requirement. So, um, you know, it's hard to imagine when I was growing up that you could teach somebody looking at, at a computer through something like a webcam, uh, but technology is obviously a, a clear part of the, um, a clear part of the game here. And there are requirements in terms of 
you know, being able to actually teach English online. So um, you're going to want to have a, uh, a decent laptop, computer. Um, some companies have apps so that you can technically use a tablet, but, you know, probably in most cases for your own, um, your own convenience, you, you want to have a solid uh, laptop or computer. Uh, you need to have a good webcam. Your students need to be able to see you, um, you know, learning uh, language is often a very visual experience. So you need to be able to be seen. Um, you need a good headset with a microphone. Uh, obviously, you know, you need to be able to speak and be heard clearly. Uh, professional backdrop and good lighting. You know, people are paying money to take uh, a class from a professional teacher. Uh, you don't want to be sitting in your bedroom with your dirty laundry laying around or, or anything like that. So you want to set up a uh, professional backdrop. You want to have good lighting, um, and that'll be key. And actually, a lot of schools, when they interview you, they may ask for a teaching demonstration. Uh, so you want to be ready to go as far as all of these requirements are concerned. Yeah, that's a fantastic point at the end there, John, is having that, you know, professional background um, that students feel like they're they're still in a, an actual classroom. Um, well, needless to say, a strong, reliable internet connection is also a key for teaching English online. Many companies will require you to conduct uh, a speed test to ensure that your internet connection is strong and dependable. Often they uh, will require you to use ethernet, a wired connection instead of Wi-Fi. And you know, this is important so that you're not dealing with audio delays or having your image freeze in the middle of teaching someone some you know, pronunciation correction and you're making a really weird face, right? You, you wanna avoid all of that stuff. So strong internet's definitely uh, something that you'll need. All right, let's take a look at some of the types of jobs for teaching English online. Uh, there are a wide variety of different, as, we, as we've touched on, different company, companies working with different demographics in different countries. Uh, you can teach as a private contractor, all sorts of options. So let's talk about them a little bit here. So teaching English online with a company, and this is definitely what most people do, especially when they're starting out um, typically when you're teaching online with a company they provide you with a set curriculum uh, most of them use a learning management platform or system kind of like moodle or blackboard if you've taken college classes online uh, you know sort of a similar type of setup um, Salaries are set on a scale very often based by experience qualifications and reviews um, and again this is a, a great way to get started and to gain experience and to um, and to learn and uh, these companies are just growing by leaps and bounds in, in recent years offering a ton of opportunities um, Robert you got started with uh, by teaching online with with a company right yeah I worked with a VIP kid who is this exact you know setup that you're describing I really enjoyed the fact that they took care of the curriculum because that meant outside of my actual classroom hours i had a pretty minimal time commitment um and uh, it was nice to be able to get 20 minutes before a class hop in take a look at all of my, my lesson plans for the day and just go in and teach them i really really enjoyed that aspect cool so the other side of the coin um, is teaching online as a private tutor one-on-one -on -one and private tutor uh, usually what you'll do is use job boards or certain platforms or websites that will allow you to market yourself to students. There's a lot more flexibility involved here uh, because you're ultimately controlling the materials that you're using. You're typically building the curriculum and, you know, essentially you are going to be your own boss. Um, so expect to spend more time and energy preparing these lessons and, you know, marketing yourself, drawing in those students. But at the end of the day, that can often mean more money. Um, so this is where typically more experienced teachers will drift um, is because you can sometimes, you know, start charging a lot more and, and keeping it in your pocket when you're, when you're working as a private teacher rather than working for a big company, um, which again, does that lesson planning for you, but 
you know, often they cap out how much they will pay you. All right, let's take a look at some of the differences between teaching English online compared to teaching English in person. Um, so obviously, difference of working within the parameters of the camera compared to working in a physical space. Um, you know, very often you'll be using similar teaching techniques and practices, but they're also very different. So being aware of your physical space, um, you know, limited by that, that camera, uh, you're going to be able, need to take measure of, of matters like your volume, your posture, your background, your lighting. Um, you'll probably use different props that will be effective on camera. So, Robert, let me just ask you, when you made the transition from teaching English in person to teaching English online, um, how did you find that? Uh, how did you find that transition? Was it difficult? And what were some of the unique props and, and so forth that you would use teaching English online compared to teaching in person? Yeah, great questions. Um, so it took some time to get used to working within within the camera, uh, especially if I were, you know, pulling something from out of frame to in frame, it would often be too close and I would have to, you know, lean back and try and get it to fit within the camera. Uh, so just getting used to yeah, working with that physical space uh, when you're when you're teaching online. Um, what I found to be very effective were realia. So I would use a lot of you know dollar bills from around the world. That's great for showing colors and numbers for younger students and older students. I think it's really cool to just see money from all over the place. Uh, you know, different American sports, right? I showed a baseball and a football, things that kind of are unique to, to our country. Um, and I also used augmented reality when I taught online, which, you know, sounds very fancy, but it was just an app that I had on my laptop, which would allow me to project an image into my camera. So if I clicked a button, boom, there was an apple next to me or a dancing monkey or whatever I wanted the student to see. So don't be totally intimidated by, you know, working with the camera and working behind a computer because it does have some advantages like being able to literally show a student basically any image that you want. It's, uh, it's cool. Beautiful. And, you know, classroom management is also very different when you're teaching English online since you can't be there with the students. Um, it's important that you're keeping the students focused throughout the class. Um, you know, different techniques that you can use to try and draw attention back onto the lesson. Uh, you might want to be aware of distractions for your students. You know, their parents might be walking around in the background, uh, sometimes in their underwear. You know, just be aware of that. That does happen. Um, you know, if you are teaching a group, how can you keep everybody engaged? Right. So classroom management is going to be a, a bit of a different approach when you're teaching English online. Um, but, you know, just take some adjustments here and there for you to, to really find that a proper fit for your students, depending on their age and language level. All right, dealing with technical issues. So one thing is the universal law about technology, you're gonna have issues um, and they're gonna pop up in many cases. So again, this is one reason why you wanna have all the, you wanna have good equipment and have a good setup to limit those issues, they can still pop up. So, um, you know, be patient with audio delays, uh, make sure that your students have time both to hear you and also to speak um, before you cut them off. Um, and correcting errors can be a bit challenging uh, when there is an, an audio uh, delay. So, you know, other issues, what if there's an internet connection that's cut, for example? Uh, Robert, not to pick on you again, but, uh, <laughs> you know, what happens, for example, if let's say you're, you're teaching a class and somebody's internet goes out or, 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 or something, yeah. something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think companies' policies all vary depending on who you're working for, but you know, often you are expected to you know kind of wait for them, hang out, see if they're able to regain that internet connectivity for your allotted class time. Um, usually, you're going to be paid regardless. So you know, if their internet drops, maybe you don't teach a lesson and then you get a little money. Not too shabby. Um, but yeah, often you're just sort of waiting things out and hoping that you get your students back in the class before your time is up for the day. 
Beautiful. So brass tacks, I mean, how much money can I earn when I'm doing this? Um, typically online teachers are paid by lessons, which are usually 25 to 30 minutes, uh, sometimes up to 45 minutes, maybe with some older students. Um, first time English teachers will make approximately 15 to 20 US dollars an hour. Again, just depending on the company you're working for and you know your, your background experience there. Um, most companies will use a pay scale that factors in experience as well as reviews um, and sometimes incentives to, to work more. So, you know, maybe you're earning $16 an hour if you're working 10 hours a week. If you're working 20 hours a week, you earn, you earn $20 an hour, right? They try to incentivize you to, to work a bit more. Uh, but really, you know, as it says here, getting good reviews is the key to the game because that is what helps you draw in more students and get raises on your next contract. And, you know, ultimately just ensure that you are successful and keep that clientele base streaming in. Yeah, so, I mean, I think one, it's it's worth pointing out, you know, again, if you want to do part-time and you want to be able just to, you know, make a couple hundred extra bucks a month, you can do that. But you can also, especially once you're established, you can work full time and um, sustain yourself financially, especially if you go overseas to some countries where the cost of living is much lower. So we have a lot of students, again, who go to places like, let's say, Latin America um, or parts of Southeast Asia where, you know, the dollar goes that much further and making 15 to $20 an hour teaching online, you actually often make more than some teachers make teaching uh, English in person at a local uh, language school. So lots of ways to, um, you know, that teaching English online is a good deal financially. And the more you work, the more experience you gain, especially if you get to the point where you can run lessons on your own, uh, you can make quite a bit more than 50 or $20 an hour. Um, all right, let's move on to uh, TEFL certification and discuss some training. Um, but first, we have another survey for all of you out there. Uh, what's important to you in looking at a TEFL training school like ITA? Uh, Matt, you got the survey ready to go? Not only do I have the new survey, but I have the results from the last one, which I forgot to share for the audience. So there it is. In case uh, you really wanted to see that, now you've got it. We were, we were being honest. Half of you guys are looking to go abroad, and I love that number. Um, now we'll launch the next poll. I know this was a really big question for me when I was looking into getting certified. Um, and rather than talk about that right now, Robert, I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, I posted to the audience that about 10 people asked about this augmented reality app. It's always a popular topic whenever you bring it up. Do you just want to mm -hmm. give us the name of the app that you like to use? Yeah, the name of the app I was using is ManyCam. M-A-N-Y-C-A-M. Um, there are multiple apps out there, though. So if you Google augmented reality um, or maybe go down some YouTube rabbit holes, that's always effective as well, uh, you might be able to find some alternatives. But I really enjoyed ManyCam. Um, and a lot of VIP Kid teachers use them. So some of the VIP Kid teachers had uploaded, you know, specific characters from VIP Kid onto ManyCam. So that was really nice, too. This is a great buzzword, you know, the augmented reality app. You can't get, you know, it's certainly peaks interest every time we hear the phrase. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like I said, it sounds way fancier than it is typically. <laughs> sure. Well, we're going to give you guys about 10 more seconds on this poll because we're over the 80% mark, which means great attentiveness. Thanks for hanging in there with us uh, this evening. We are at 300 attendees. So, the result of this poll is is um, no small number with 85% voted. All right, we got five, four, three, two, oh, up to 86, we're closing it. I'm gonna share the results. Can you guys see them? Yep. Yes, sir. All right, I guess we could see it last time. That was my mistake with uh, this. It's been a while since I've run the panel, sorry guys. Uh, but internationally recognized, respected, and accredited is important to 
pretty much everybody, and uh, alumni community and job support, which I think is really, you're in the right place if that's what you're looking for, because ITA is unique to any organization in the TEPL field in the sense that we have professional staff who help you one-on-one -on -one with the job support, with looking for work, and in fact, we've helped many people before and we've documented it. So we have resources available to you, and we do a lot of fun things with our community, but it's not just meant to be fun, it's also meant to be practical. There are people abroad who are working, you can network with, uh, who are working in positions and um, around the world, and you can connect with them. So that is something that is unique to our organization in terms of how impactful and how real the alumni community is. That's right. We'll be talking about that more in uh, just a minute here. I'm going to hide these results. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to TEPL certification. All right. So online TEPL certification, um, this is the route most people go now with COVID. I'd say 98% of our students are taking their classes um, online, and there are a variety of reasons why. We offer two online TEPL classes. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about here is our 11-week part-time online TEPL class. Uh, what's great about this class is that it provides a top-level TEPL certification uh, equivalent to the top in-person TEPL classes. It's taught by super qualified, experienced instructors. So these are basically university level instructors, uh, internationally accredited and recognized. Um, it's 20 students per class. So you're getting individual feedback and attention, uh, interaction with your instructor. Uh, there are videos, live webinars, live office hours, um, that said, even though there are live aspects to the class, there's no required live time. So this class is designed to accommodate people who are either working full-time or going to school full-time, people living in different time zones. You're never actually required to log on at a particular time to attend a webinar. If you can attend a webinar or some other live aspect of the class, it's all um, recorded and you can revisit it. Um, this class does incorporate live practice teaching, even though it is an online class, and even with the pandemic, people are doing this mostly online. Um, so it really hits, you know, all the critical points when you're looking at a top-level TEFL class. Tuition for this class is $1,449. Um, there is $100 off if you enroll by the 15th of February, and needless to say, this is a great option, especially if you're looking to get certified during COVID. All right, so we also offer a four-week intensive online TEFL class. Uh, this class is structured a lot more like our uh, in-person classes, which are four weeks, full-time, you know, nine to five, five days a week. Um, this class you really do need to be engaged. It really is a full-time commitment. Um, that said, don't you know? Certainly, there's a lot of uh, uh, time in class in sort of you know a Zoom-like setting. That said, you're not in a lecture, say from nine to five. There are times when you're working on projects, when you're working with your peers, when you're doing your practicum or your practice teaching, uh, when you're working on assignments and so forth. Again, you're working with top-notch university-level instructors internationally accredited. There are only 12 students per class, so there's lots of engagement with your instructors and also with class. Um, tuition, $19.95. There's a $99. There's a $200 discount for all 2021 classes. Another great option for getting certified quickly during COVID. Um, so yeah, if you're looking at your options, talk to your advisor about both of these classes. Uh, and they'll help you figure out which is your best option. We do also have in-person classes, though they're not, uh, many of them are not operating at the moment. But Robert, you want to give a, a quick rundown for those who may be thinking, oh, I'll get TEPL certified in person maybe later down the line or, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. So most in-person courses are going to be four weeks long and full-time, kind of that Monday through Friday, nine to five type gig. 
Um, it's going to be at least 100 hours of coursework, at least six hours of practice teaching with non-native English speakers, typically locals for wherever you're taking your course. Um, we have partner schools in 25 locations around the world. Similar to our online class, they're all taught by professional instructors with masters or PhDs. Um, all of the courses are accredited as well by international government bodies. Uh, typically, it's going to be capped out as about 12 students per class, you know, with that personal instructor because it is such a small setting. Uh, and tuition really vary depending on where you want to go, but it can be anywhere from, you know, $1,500 um, up to $2,500 plus, you know, food, housing, those types of things. Um, and as John said, it's important to note that uh, the in-person options are pretty limited for the foreseeable future. And we're really recommending the online classes at this time, especially if you are an American or maybe our uh, neighbors to the north up in Canada, um, you know, but make sure you talk to your advisor about this if you are considering those in-person courses. All right, and we do offer a specialty class for teaching English online. Uh, this is, uh, it's really a fantastic class. Um, consider it sort of like an add-on um, to your standard TEFL certification class. So this class is available exclusively to our own students and graduates. Um, this is a two-week class, basically 30 hours of coursework. Uh, the setup is somewhat similar to the, uh, the uh, part-time 11-week online class in that you're looking at 20 students per class. You're taught uh, online in Moodle, uh, you're not, there's no required live time, for example. Uh, again, you're working with highly qualified instructors. These are people with extensive experience specifically in the field of teaching English online. Um, you'll be learning about all sorts of teaching methodologies and best practices about some of the stuff we've been talking about that Robert's been talking about in terms of working within the parameters of the camera and so forth and using different, um, you know, classroom management practices and so forth. You're also going to get an introduction to some of the major platforms that some of these companies use, so you'll gain some familiarity with those. Um, and also insights and tips for your job search uh, process to you know, further educate you and assist you when it comes to finding opportunities. Um, tuition for this class, $2.99, you save $50 if you enroll for, with your standard uh, ITA TEFL class by February 15th. Um, Robert, you got anything to add about, you know, the specialty class and, you know, maybe why people want to take it? Yeah, I mean, I think even there's just value in being able to see what's out there. Um, there are legitimately over 100 online teaching companies. Business models vary quite a bit. Um, and, you know, this course is really going to help show you what you can even do in this industry. Um, as well as, you know, how to be successful, how to get those good reviews, how to build up that client topic. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's definitely going to be a lot of value in this training. If you can see yourself doing this for, you know, part time, maybe at least for a year or so, or if you're planning on doing this full time, it's absolutely going to be uh, going to be worth it for you. Um, plus, it's just a nice little boost to your resume as well, which uh, a lot of employers look favorably upon. Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, uh, there's competition and there's, you know, with COVID, more people are looking into teaching English online. It is becoming a more competitive field, even while it grows. Um, a lot of people applying for these positions. They have maybe a standard TEFL certification, but not an online, uh, online teaching specific, you know, training. So this can give you a nice leg up uh, in addition to those additional skills to really have help you provide your students with the best uh, educational experience possible. Absolutely. So let's look at the job search guidance and our student affairs team. So all of our students and graduates enjoy lifetime job search guidance to gain employment, uh, teaching English abroad, as well as teaching online. You know, this includes access to uh, an array of resources, personal guidance from an expert advisor, uh, being able to join our alumni network, those 30,000 teachers that we graduated from our school. Um, so yeah, let's kind of dive into detail. Um, so in addition to your TEFL advisor who will help you create your success plan, once you've enrolled, you will start working with a job search guidance advisor. And they are the experts in, in finding work. So they're going to, you know, help prep you for the hiring process. 
That includes assistance with your resume and your cover letter, uh, you know, advice and information on hiring seasons, visas, education and citizenship requirements, uh, all of the resources, including our 500 page manual, which breaks down literally all of the paid teaching markets around the world, hundreds of job boards, uh, an ESL school directory that has close to 20,000 schools in it now, uh, broken down country by city, uh, referrals to some of the top recruiters. So you're gonna get access to you know, a wide array of things that will really help you be successful here. Um, and we also enjoy relationships and partnerships with some of the big online teaching companies, um, as well as loads of resources just dedicated to teaching English online. Yeah, so teaching English online, teaching English in person, uh, we got you covered, you know, for life. either way you want to go, if you want to do both. Um, it's really fantastic. And uh, yeah, and then the other side of the coin is our alumni community and association. So, you know, I think both Matt and Robert just touched on this. Um, really, since we started as an organization, we've really looked to build an international community of teachers and travelers. Um, so we've set up all kinds of networks and opportunities for our students and graduates to connect with each other and also to share their stories and experiences. Uh, we have more than 90 uh, country and topic specific Facebook groups where our students and alumni can go and interact, ask questions, share tips, um, share information. People are arranging social meetups. Sometimes they find roommates. Um, so really fantastic uh, opportunities to get to know other people and ask questions and to interact with people who've been in your shoes who are abroad or teaching English online and actually doing this. Our Teaching English Online Facebook group is really active, uh, tons of great stuff going on in there. Um, in addition, we publish hundreds of alumni stories, videos, uh, our alumni do takeovers on Instagram on a regular basis, for example. You really get great insights into what it is like to teach English in Thailand or in Costa Rica or to teach English online from maybe anywhere in the world. Uh, over the years, we've organized many social gatherings around the globe. We, Not during the pandemic, obviously, but uh, we have our World Alumni Days when we arrange meetups in different cities, up to 20, 25 cities around the world. Uh, and a couple of years ago, we started the ITA Teach Abroad Film Festival. So more than 50 alumni submitted films. We had a big uh, gathering at the historic Davis Theater in Chicago. It was covered by the International, by the Chicago Tribune and lots of other media. And uh, yeah, just fantastic way to interact and connect with, with other folks. So I highly recommend going on our website, checking out the blog, and you will find, again, literally hundreds of articles, videos, um, and other stories where you can really gain a lot of insights into what it's like to teach English online and also teach English uh, abroad. And this is really something where we've set ourselves apart from most educational uh, organizations um, certainly most of those in the field of TEPL. All right. Um, next steps. Talk to your advisor. So this is key. Um, whether you're looking to teach English abroad, you're looking to teach English online, you got questions about certification, talk to your advisor. They're, they're experts. They've been in your shoes. They're highly trained. Um, They'll answer all of your questions, uh, and they'll they'll be frank and realistic with you about what your options are, given your own personal circumstances and goals. They'll help you put together a roadmap. They'll help you with financial planning, uh, arranging payment plans, whatever it is. They're there to assist you. Uh, again, get TEFL certified. It's the key that opens the door for all of these great experiences teaching English online and teaching English abroad. And then, hey, experience the world, make a difference in the lives of others by teaching English abroad and certainly teaching English uh, online. We're here to help you make it happen. Um, Kari, Matt, what are people asking about in the in the in the big chat? I had somebody who just asked me explicitly if we could uh, kind of explain the difference of cost and investment into ITA's certification course versus 
these other courses, which seem to be less? Okay, I mean, that's a great question. It comes up all the time. Uh, and I think there are a couple points to bear in mind here. Um, one, TEFL certifications, like a lot of other things, uh, you're going to get what you pay for. Um, and when you're getting TEFL certified, you're typically looking to basically make a life-changing decision to go abroad or teach English online and, uh, you know, change your life doing so. So um, we, really, we really pride ourselves on um, providing the highest level courses, hiring the best instructors, uh, hiring qualified folks like Matt and Robert and Kari who have experience doing this to help you answer your questions and to provide you with all the information you need to figure this out, whether it's not just choosing the right TEPL class, but understanding different job markets. Um, you know, what are, how do visas work in different countries? Uh, what are the hiring requirements? Um, if you don't have a degree, there are 50 countries where you can teach, but there are other countries where maybe you can't. So figuring all of this out and having getting the right information and having there somebody there to really walk you through it and help you understand all of the nuances is really key. And that's one area where we really set ourselves apart. The other part is the back end. So all the job guidance support that we just talked about. We have a team of it's soon going to be 10 people who work full time and basically their purpose in life is to help our students get jobs and have a great experience. Um, that's not something you're going to find at any other TEFL school. And frankly, we get two dozen calls or inquiries a day from people who get TEFL certified from some other operation. They tried to save money. They took the Groupon class for you know $99 or they took some $299 self-paced, self-taught online class from a quote unquote tutor, you know, not a not a university <laughs> instructor. Um, and they don't get the job placement assistance they need to actually find a job in Spain or Thailand or Japan or wherever it is they want to go. So um, you know, the other thing to keep in mind is hey, if an offer seems too good to be true, it probably is. So just ask yourself, hey, am I really going to become a qualified English teacher by taking a self-paced uh online class for 199 dollars that doesn't have a real professor um, where there's no interaction or no practicum uh probably not and believe me uh schools around the world have wised up to all of this and uh, we have students who have taught in 90 countries around the world taking the online class uh the proof is in the pudding they're all able to get jobs because employers around the globe recognize ita as a premier uh TEFL training school so i don't know robert you got other any anything else to add or, or kari or matt do you have anything else to add to what i just uh, rambled on about there yeah i mean you basically have three categories in this industry um as john said you have you know highest quality training you have best student services after the training and then you have the lowest price point and realistically a TEFL school can compete for two of those three at most and our focus really is on those first two categories. You want to make sure that you are well trained and prepared to do this and that you have the support you need to be successful. Um, so I, I often like to flip this question around and ask yourself, whatever the tuition you're looking at, whatever it may be, where is this investment going? Where can I see this money? Um, and that's usually a good approach to take when you're comparing schools. All right, and we do have some great articles about you know things you need to watch out for when you're when you're you know looking at different options for TEFL certification, um, you know not just not just price but but other stuff. So uh, I don't know if Matt and Kari have those handy to share, but you can look on our website there and, and find them as well. Yeah, great question. Yeah, great right. question. Um, I actually have a question, if if that's all right. So at the at the beginning of the webcast, um, Violet had asked me, she's thinking about teaching English online to adult learners. Is just the TEFL certificate sufficient to do so? I'm wondering a bit about specialty courses, if if she needs it or if TEFL is enough. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so to be clear, the 11 week course, the four week intensive course, the in-person courses we offer, those will all qualify you for these jobs. 
working with adults, working with children, teaching English online. The specialty courses are there for a few reasons, but primarily it's to add to your skill set. Um, so for example, if I'm working with a business professional, maybe I'm working with a flight attendant and he or she is going to need to learn very job specific vocabulary and learn how to work with international or English speakers. Um, versus maybe I'm going to volunteer at a program where I'm working on a coffee plantation. And it's gonna be a totally different approach if I'm teaching you know, those workers English. Um, so the specialty course is there to, to dive more into detail of how you approach, um, you know, whether you're working with business professionals, doing a needs analysis, figuring out what exactly the, this person's goals are going to be and how you create your lesson plan around that. Um, and teaching English online, as we said earlier, that specialty course is, is really going to help you first learn what's out there and, and how these jobs function, and second, you know, how to be effective when you're teaching online. Um, so they are optional, but at the end of the day, you know, they're just there for your benefit to boost your resume, help you improve your skills, and, you know, make you a stronger teacher. Great. Anything well, you wanted to add, John or Kari, Matt? Um, no, I'm good. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm over here on the chat right now. It's the end of the night, and we're getting a lot of questions. Everybody <laughs> out there, we'd love to answer all of them. We really would, but if they're all coming at the same time. Um, yeah, we got, a, we got maybe a minute or two to go. We don't want to keep people over an hour, uh, but let's take maybe one more question, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll sign off. I, I'm going to ask a question then that came up a couple of times and. And maybe it was touched on a bit, but I still think it's important. Um, people are asking about kind of like the schedule. And, you know, I think it's important to understand time differences of where you are and where your students are and how that can work. Um, you know, what are some ways you can maximize your availability to teach during normal hours in the United States or in other parts of the world if you're traveling around? Because we know that this is kind of a, a game of where your students are, where you are, and there are students around the world, and a lot of our students like to travel around the world. So could you talk to that for just a moment? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and as you said earlier, in most cases, you are setting your own schedule. So that's the really nice thing here. Um, when I was teaching online, I worked with a Chinese-based company, and I only worked with one company full-time. So I did work mornings and nights to kind of get to 40 hours a week. I was totally comfortable with that. If you're not comfortable doing that, that's okay. Uh, some people will instead work for multiple companies. You know, maybe you start off in the morning with a, a Chinese-based company, and then by early afternoon, you're working with a company based in Latin America or Europe or something along those lines. So you can absolutely stagger the time zones in which you're working, just depending on the organization that you're working for, wherever your students are going to be located. Um, and when it comes to like, you know, kind of that digital nomad life you were mentioning, Matt, and, and hopping around the world. That's definitely something you need to factor in. Um, those time zone changes as you're moving from one country to the next and how they're going to affect your schedule and, you know, when you'll be syncing up with your students. Um, but, you know, I, I think the main takeaway here is, again, being able to set your own schedule is, is what, you know, dictates you don't have to wake up at three o'clock in the morning, right, to be able to teach students in China. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. You know, don't don't do that. Um, you're you're going to be uh, you're going to be setting those hours and opening up your schedule. All right. Well, uh, man, what an hour! I think we covered a lot of ground. I know a lot of you still have questions, so get in touch with your advisor. Uh, check out all the information on our website, and uh, yeah. Thanks for joining us, giving us, spending an hour of your time with us. Uh, Robert, Kari, Matt, thanks so much. And uh, have a great evening or morning or whatever it is, wherever you may be. And uh, take care and stay safe. Take care, everybody. Have a good night, everyone. All right. Good, good to see you guys. Cheers.